I lived in a cave for eight days in complete darkness last year. Is this a meditation retreat or is this something altogether different? It's called the dark retreat. And so that's a whole other thing. And I was just kind of curious to see what it would happen. And so I'm now like very curious about these things. Again, like you're meditating, but it's also the added factor of like complete darkness. And I, I wrote a post, which we can link in the show notes and we can talk more about that. But I think the difference, and again, totally subjective. This is just my opinion and people listening may be like, no, but so take it with a grain of salt. But for me, I'm just thinking all the time. And so when I get up, boom, phone, let's go. Okay. 40 emails, 15 telegram messages, Slack messages. Like I've got to get back to my team. I need to make everything happen. And then it's like, what about my food? Am I going to go to the gym later? What does my wife think about me? What do my parents think? What do I have this thing? You know, it's just non stop worry, fear of the future, craving. It's like your mind is a wild animal. And then on top of that, if people are listening, they're probably high performance entrepreneurs. It's like, let's go coffee. You know, and then it's like, open the computer. I'm at my seat 12 hours a day, just like going, 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 trying to make something happen, which is fine. But what you're doing, you're stimulating your fight or flight response, like your sympathetic nervous system. And it's so overstimulated. So hundreds of years ago, what was an average day? It's like, oh, I'm, you know, sleep on the ground, wake up, fresh air, breathing slow, kind of relaxing most of the day. Then maybe I'll like go for a hunt, come back home. And like, there's no, you're not consistently stimulated and the stimulation now is so strong. Like if you watch Netflix, there's no commercials. It's just over and over to watch like TikTok. It's crazy. And so what these things do, they take away all stimulation. So imagine like these thoughts that you're running with all the time, they kind of run themselves out. So like uh, one analogy I've heard on the Aubrey Marcus podcast, which I like is like your brain has 200 tabs open and there's just so many things going on all the time. Right. And so imagine just slowly how good it would feel to shut each 200 tabs reboot your computer and open it in a way that's fresh. And so when you're doing that, you're just focusing on your mind and body. It's hard. Like you're at points where like you're physically uncomfortable, your body is aching, which I was actually shocked by how physically demanding it is. And every time I'm like, oh man, this is like so hard. <laughs> it just allows you to kind of shut those tabs off and start to notice that like you're not in control of your thoughts. And it's one thing to say that, but by just focusing on the time, you start to realize like, oh, I'm not. So maybe I can just like, let go. So you're sharpening your awareness, you're feeling into emotions, you're processing them, letting them go. You're like learning things about yourself. You're having vivid, vivid memories. Like it almost is like watching a movie of your early life, which can be like really beautiful. And then when it ends, you just feel so focused and present. And like, there's probably things happening neurologically in the nervous system from just lack of stimulation, proper sleep, healthy food, perfect breathing the entire day. Like there's so many things happening that are good for the body and mind in addition to the meditation. It's like a timeout, a complete reset, a way to better know yourself. And that's kind of what I had suggested if my recommendation was like, find, figure out your authentic self. And this is like a way to do that. 